Hello. Hey, how are you? Good. Good. This system sucks. Okay. <laughs> this system sucks. So I apologize for all the missed calls and all those other things. So um, you have court on Friday, correct? Uh, correct. Yes. And so um, I know you've probably been hearing from everyone to make sure that you let them know that you have fired that um, public defender. Right, 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 right. And I still hadn't heard nothing from him. What is going? What do you think is going on with him? Uh, what, this is Ellis County. <laughs> um, no, but uh, no, I think I really think that uh, you know, I know it's a money game. Mm -hmm. So I really just think that it's just a matter of holding on to to the case. To to everything you got, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, mm -hmm. especially you know to the case and stuff. But that's what I've been told though. These these attorneys out here tend to uh you know, play hand in hand with, you know, the system. So it's all money and uh, you're going to squeeze everything they can out of it. Yeah. Right. Because that's how they get paid, right. To remain on the right. case. So right. if they give it up, then they don't get paid, which is understandable. But at the same time though, it's a disservice to the legal system, right? You are right. allowed to have the counsel you so desire, even if that includes yourself, right? Like, just yeah. Yeah, and that's uh like I've I've I filed a couple of motions now, uh, of dismissal of counsel. So, you know, at this point, I feel like you know there's definitely major violations. So, uh, considering that they go through with this hearing, because I'm told most hearings get pushed back. Mm -hmm. But considering they do go through with it, like that's one of my first things is you know my constitutional rights, the sixth and the fourteenth. Uh, that's right. Uh, being violated. So. That's right. You know. Uh, so yeah, you know your you know your your constitutional rights. A little bit, you know. Uh, I've run into a couple of guys in here who really have been a benefit. Yeah. Kind of keep me on my toes and who've been down this road before. Yeah, and getting you an understanding of your case. So when we talk about right, the last time we spoke, we were just trying to figure out who knows what, what's going on, your theories behind how you end up ended up in this mess. Um, and how you believe, uh, or how you stated that that voice recording with Amari and Cora, Cora sent it to you, and because of that, you kind of believe that she was attempting to help you, right? Like clear this up because you stated that um, you were you're, you were having issues with Amari, and you might have you might were going to send her to a boarding school because of her antics. Um, so let, I want to get into that a little bit deeper. So what were what were some telltale things that made you and Cora kind of sit down and be like, maybe she should be somewhere where she has more, um, like more a little more strictness and a little more structure. Like what was she doing that made you want to sit down and even have that conversation? Well, I mean, at this at that point, it was already like a build up over like we've had her since she was three. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um. Like I said, early, even early on, it was already an issue, like, uh, with how she responded with, you know, her truth or, you know, just the simple things and simple tasks, you know what I'm saying? So it was already an issue on the table yeah. uh, with lying, and that was one of the bigger things for uh, us to deal with early on was just to be able to get you to trust us enough to be able to be honest, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So you did have issues with Amari and her ability to tell the truth when she was caught doing something, right? Oh, yeah. And she would keep it until you run her down in the dirt with, you know, your evidence or, you know, look, I, I already know, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was always that kind of thing. So, and that was one of the biggest uh, frustrations for us, especially for her. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was one of those kind of things. And by that time, uh, that... We're talking about boarding school. I think she's like, I want to say 11. Okay. Um, and, you know, we've done all of the, you know, taking away privileges. We've done all of the, you know, all of the, you know, stripping of the, you know, I guess different privileges and toys and, you know, all that stuff. So Cell phones. That point, yeah, no, nothing. Like, you know, took the tablet. You know, she didn't have a phone at the time, but taking the tablet, you know, uh, taking the toys, take, you know what I'm saying, shut down TV, no computer, no outside type stuff, you know, just kind of, you know, think about 
you right now. Yeah. You know, we did all of that. So at this point, it was like, look, what else do I do? Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, and especially for for Core, you know, it was one of those big things, and I understood exactly what she was saying. Yeah. Uh, because it was the most frustrating thing, just trying to have a communication. You know, uh, and, and you can't seem to just tell the truth about what today is. Mm-hmm. You know, it was it almost felt like that. Yeah. So when so, she when when Amari made these claims against you that night, they came back from Los Angeles, um, and then the days after, do you think Cora was having an issue believing her? Um, I I think. For me, like I said, I'm torn between the ideas because I, at one side, I do believe it, that she had trouble believing it. You know what I'm saying? She she called me and, and tried to figure out where I was, trying to figure out what, what kind of state I was in type, type situation and trying to understand what's what and get clarity. But by this time, you know, uh, I, I think that she's already made whatever move she was going to make. Mm-hmm. So it was already kind of like I don't I don't understand what's going on, you know. Yeah. Uh. So I I don't know. Like I can't honestly say one way or the other. But from my my vantage point, being that I've known this woman for over twelve years, mm-hmm. of course I want to believe that that she knows me and she believed me. You know what I'm saying? Um, right. And and that's kind of what I stood on. You know, um, has that changed? Uh, a lot has changed. So, so yeah, I, I like I said, I'm torn between the, the ideas of you know who's for me and who's against me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Of course, and and I've had a lot of people who who I don't even you know consider close like that who who seem to know me better. Than your wife. You know what I'm yeah, then then what has been shown to me from mm-hmm. the people that I held close, you know what I mean? Right. So I mean like that's difficult, right? Like that's you love your wife and you had a twelve year relationship with her and then all of a sudden you just one day you wake up and you're like, Wow, I don't really know this woman, you know? Um Do you think that the reason why Cora stopped like you know, sending you those videos and reaching out to you and all of those things, do you think it had any influence to do with her family telling her not to talk to you? Or do you think she decided that on her own? Um, that's very possible. Mm-hmm. It's very possible considering, like I said, the circumstances and, you know, you know, and, and her family is very close knit and they protect each other and they're going to protect each other. Yeah. You know, and so it's, it, you know, I don't doubt that at all. Did you have a close relationship with the Jakes while you were with Cora? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, like I said, everything is from my my standpoint, my my viewpoint. And from my viewpoint, it was very close. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, everybody, you know, I gave love to everybody. And everybody uh, gave love back. Yeah. You know, until it wasn't. Yeah, which is interesting too, because now you don't even hear from them. Um, I want to talk about the letter. So at the time you had obtained an attorney, I forget his name, but he had wrote you this very detailed letter about how he did not like how the Jakes were moving um, in this entire situation. Do you remember that letter? No. It it was sent to you a while ago. Um, It was sent to you a while ago. So I'll just label some references so it stated that um uh td and sarita were really just focused on their image and how this was going to make them look and um the way that they were operating with the whole like how do we spin this in the media how are we going to look in the bright light of this made your made at the time your attorney quite uncomfortable very uncomfortable actually uh uncomfortable to the point where he would put it in a letter um do you think that because of this whole situation, just your opinion, it's not about what you know, but based on your opinion, do you think that the Jakes do care more about their self-image when it comes to things, 
that may come out against them or about their family members? Like, is their self-image important to them based off of your 12 years of being with the family? Um, I, I think ultimately, it, it, I think they've always protected family. Mm-hmm. So I think image comes with that. Um, so, I mean, you know, whatever that, yeah, I think, I think that it does come with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know? Yeah, no, that's okay if, that, if that's what you think. I mean, because granted, just based off of your case, it just, you just seem like a casualty to them, right? So if they're about protecting family, is there a reason why they wouldn't pr- protect you, right? Um, is there any reason? Did you did you give them anything to believe, anything for them to just kind of toss you aside as a casualty? No, I, I feel like, like I said, family, I think that... Uh this particular situation I think that it's just been like I said family is family um you know mm-hmm. and, and that's kind of how I've taken it you know what I'm saying because I don't I don't understand why you know uh, I wouldn't be you know in the, in the protection of it mm-hmm. but like I said then again like I said family is family right and uh so here I am mm-hmm yeah, there you are. Do you think this um, is a, just a case of mistaken identity, or do you think there is a conspiracy behind this? Do you think this is a setup? What are your thoughts on this whole situation, or do you think it's just something just that occurred accidentally that went too far? Um, like I said, I, I think you kind of asked me something like this before, mm-hmm. but. I, I really do feel like, uh, like in this case, in mm-hmm. this particular circumstance, like I'm just having a tough time wrapping my head around conspiracy because, like I said, all I've all I've ever seen and thought of was love. Mm-hmm. You know, now I've had issues. We've had issues with, um, you know, our daughter for ever. So uh, this is not the first time this has come up. You know what I'm saying? This has come up with somebody else's name attached to it. In the family? No. Uh, uh, it was a previous uh, home. So for me, it was it was one of those kind of things. Like I just, I don't know. Like to conceptualize it, it's like I became the bad guy somewhere. Mm-hmm. And you know, you just kind of utilize what you could or what you knew or how you. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. don't know. It just seemed like it was something that was familiar. Yeah. Or do you it was think... It just a different seat. Do you think that this alleged lie of Amari had snowballed to the point where uh, Cora could have used it as a way to get out of the marriage? I don't know. I don't know. Because, uh, it, it, I mean, we just celebrated uh, birthdays and anniversaries and you know, it's just, like I said, this just putting that in that kind of lens. And it's just, like I said, for me, I just don't see it. I yeah. don't see it. I just don't see it. Yeah. So um, do, do you think, do you, do you know, or did you ever suspect that Cora was cheating on you? No. No? No. So you have no specific theory as to why you're here, right? Like, there's no, you have no rhyme or reason no, to figure out why you're there. No, we, uh, I, I, you asked me, um, I think one call, not the last one, but maybe the one previous, uh, and I think my, my thing was, is us talking about, uh, psychiatric help, and, mm-hmm. and I think that for as long as I think, uh, Amari could remember, we would, you know, share her story and her background, and she knew about her background, her mother's background, mm-hmm. and we've talked about getting psychiatric help to make sure to see and to see, you know, if she had issues or mood swings would happen, things like that. And I think that me agreeing with Cora broke the camel's back. Yeah. Because uh, I always stood up for. Her. I always, you know, hey, let's, you know, let's just see if talking through it helps or. Let's just see if we can get an understanding because, you know, this, you know, all those kinds of things like that. Uh, 
so much so that, like I said, I, I think I, I was the lifeline of grace mm-hmm. when it came to that. And Cause you stuck up that, for her, right? Right. Uh, uh, and I think that me agreeing, I think, broke the camel's back. I think that's that's what I think. Um, Cause that same, like I said, the same night is the same night that I told her. I said, you know, hey, we're looking into, you know, possibly getting you some, you know, getting you evaluated. You know. And you think that was, happened. you think because you had told Amari we might get you evaluated, this is what, this is what brought on this alleged lie, correct? I think so, absolutely. I think I think that her being. I think that her being, uh, I don't know, or frustrated or, or disappointed or angry at the fact that this is something that we agreed on and uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe even her being seen as her mother. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know, may, may have, you know, put her in this, this space. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, that's the only thing I can think of. Like, if I could be honest, that's the only thing I can think of. That will lead to this. Um, yeah. So you have this conversation with Amari the night that they return home from Los Angeles and, with Cora and say, was there something, did you want, so let me just back up a little, backtrack a little bit. So before you had this conversation with her the night that they returned, was the trip to Los Angeles as a way to kind of like cushion having that conversation? Or was no. that what that was well planned before you decided to do that? What no, did... this is this mm-hmm. was uh this the same night, you know. Um well it was uh I think we had a phone call maybe like the night before or something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, Cora was telling me how, you know, she was having these in and out moments. What oh. okay, thank you. In and out moments? Yeah, where she was just having uh, you know, mood swings, mm-hmm. and you know, she's you know, I was told about you know her and her cousin, of course, and I and I kind of expressed like their relationship. So, you know, for me, that wasn't out of the norm. You know what I'm saying? Y'all get on each other's nerves, type thing, <clears throat> or whatever. So it wasn't like out of the norm. Uh, you know, so that was already like a precursor to this conversation. Mm-hmm. And then once we, <clears throat> and you know, I'm I'm thinking, okay, well, of course, you know, she she loved California. She just want to stay, you know, but school coming, mm-hmm. you know, she can't stay. Yeah. You can't, you can't have more time. No school coming. Uh, get home. You still frustrated or mad about this trip and you still got school. Yeah. And so, like I said, you know, Cora tells me, Hey, you know, I, you see what I'm talking about? We've, we've talked about this many times. I think that she needs to be evaluated. How was her behavior that day when she had, right, that conclusion, I'm home and I got to go to school. How was her behavior? Was she being emotionally erratic or silent? Or can you describe to us how she was acting? Yeah, no, it was, you know, upset. I got an attitude. Uh, and, you know, just, you know how, you know, I guess people walk around when they're frustrated and got that kind of attitude. So right. it became a conversation of like, yo, like tighten up, like check you, take a moment, get yourself together. And, uh, you know, let's figure out what's what. Figure yeah. out what's, what's what's making you like this, so we can address it. Mm-hmm. And that was the that was literally the conversation. Not ten minutes later, she gets herself together. Okay, yes, I, I was frustrated. I did want to stay. Type, you know, conversation. I'm like, okay, I get that. Got you. But you can't you can't walk around here like that and, and you know changing the tone. Right. You know, of the house. And uh, so it was that like. It was day and night, and even after that conversation, of course, like, you see what I'm saying? And, uh, and so, you know, when she was talking about us, you know, looking into getting help, I said, I, I, you know, maybe it's time. Mm-hmm. Because we were already told early on that these kind of signs and symptoms could show up because of the genetic background. Got you. And so uh, that was something that always kind of stuck with us. Those were part of conversations that we would have uh, between us two. Mm-hmm. And so 
that's something that we kind of kept our eye on because they said, you know, keep your eye on it. It could show up later. It could do this or that. So we always kind of kept our eye on it, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, this was a moment where she brought it up and I said, okay. And, um, Yeah. But um, they're telling me I have an attorney visit. Okay. Um, so I will. Well, we, I'll talk to you. Uh, we can schedule another yeah. call and a, okay. at a later date. All right. And good luck. Yeah. Okay, bye bye. Hold on one second. Um, hold on one second. 